Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program today. We are in the middle of a teaching on enjoying God's best. And I don't know who wouldn't want to hear that teaching. It's very positive. There's so much to it. The Bible's filled, especially the New Testament, is filled with promises that, and, and instructions to help us get in position to just live and keep on living. God's plan is that you would go from faith to faith, from victory to victory, from glory to glory, and that's the way we should desire to live our lives. I want today to be better than yesterday, and I expect tomorrow to be better than today. Because when you're walking with God, living for God, the best is always ahead. <laughs> He's a good God. There is nothing unfair about God and serving God, walking with God. It's a privilege. It's an honor. And frankly, he's offering us a lifestyle, an opportunity to live life that wasn't even available in the Old Testament before Jesus was raised from the dead. But enjoying God's best is possible today under this better covenant established on better promises. It is a great day to be alive. And I don't care what's happening around us in the political world, in the economic world. I, I'll tell you the truths of God do not change with world events. These things are true today. They'll be true as long as we're in this world. The truths of God work. They're not dependent on the world system. And so thank God this is something you can build your life on. I want to go back to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 where it says, For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And those scriptures are very encouraging. We did an entire teaching on receiving God's best based on these scriptures. If you didn't hear that teaching and you'd like to, it's still available. You can go to our website and download the audio and stream the video for free, absolutely free. And I'd encourage you to get that teaching because it's, it's just so encouraging. It lays the foundation for what we're doing now. I believe that by grace are you saved through faith. We practice that. Thank God for His grace. Thank God for all the things that have been freely given to us through uh, the gift of salvation. We didn't work to get it. In fact, he says it's not of works, lest anyone should boast. And we talked about religious works. They're worthless. They don't produce anything. However, there is Ephesians 2.10, and that is the basis of this teaching. If you want to enjoy God's best, if you want to live life God's way, then you want to implement Ephesians 2.10, and it says this. It says, we are His workmanship. Now that we've received His grace, we've been born again, we're His workmanship. One translation says we're His work of art. Another says we're His masterpiece. We were created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has given us this new life so that we could live life the way He intended for us to live it. We are to be involved in good works. We didn't do away with good works in Christianity. We just don't use them to try to qualify to receive salvation. They don't qualify us. But once we're saved, we should be involved in a lot of good works. Because that's where, the, that's where the pleasure is. That's where the adventure is. That's where the satisfaction is. That's where the fulfillment is. Good works are good. They are fun. That makes life interesting. And so uh, we've looked at some different scriptures throughout the epistles that talk about how important we are, are to be zealous for good works and involved in good works. And, and I want to go down to Ephesians 4 because uh, th this is something that, and I was really meditating on last night, and I thought I should share this with you. This really speaks to me as, as to God's attitude toward us and what God wants for us. And some people, if they don't understand the heart of God, they might think God's demanding, but He's really not. He's just trying to open up the riches and the joy of living life His way. 
It's a, it's a, it's a life that probably very few people have, have really stepped into in the, in the overall picture. But every Christian has the potential to live life God's way and experience God's best in their life. Here's a good example of that. In Ephesians 4, 28, Paul is saying, let him who stole steal no longer. So, you know, that's like a, that's one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. So you say, well, he's putting us back under the law. I'm, I'm under grace now. I can't steal. No, you shouldn't steal. We didn't do away with the law just because you're born again. He put the law in you. And if we would listen to the voice of our inward man, the righteousness of God, the spirit of God that's in us, we would know not to steal, but evidently it did happen. And so Paul's just bringing this. He's really stating the obvious. And he does that a lot in the epistles. But he said, he said, let him who stole steal no longer. So don't steal. Here's where Paul departs with modern thinking. This is New Testament thinking. Look at this. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good. In, in the world, you'd say, you, you'd find a thief and you say, we want to rehabilitate you. Look, we understand your need. We understand that you have lack. And we understand that you see people who have more than you do. And, we, and, and we're going to help you. We're going to give you things. We're going to try to make you less needy. And, 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 it, and it's not God's way. God has a higher way. He wants something for you that is beyond and above natural living. Notice this. This is so profound. He's, if, you're, if, you, if you find a thief, a Christian that's stealing, here's what you do. Don't steal. Here's what you do. Labor, working with your own hands. In other words, get a job. Go get a job and go to work. Why? So you can provide for your needs and you don't have to steal. No. No. <laughs> go to work so that you won't be so jealous of everybody else that has money. No, that's not what he said. He says, look, here's what you do. Go to work. Labor, get your paycheck so that you may have something to give to him who has need. That is out of this realm. I mean, that completely turns things around. He's talking to people who ought not be stealing. And he's saying, look, far from being a thief, what you need to do is get involved, work, make money, and then take that and give it to somebody else. He's turning thieves into givers. Do you see what that does? That moves you from the level of a thief, wherever that would be. It's pretty low to be a thief. It's not a, it's not a real high standard. But it moves you to a standard that is above and beyond anything that you could imagine. And Paul believes it's possible. God believes it's possible that he could take his spirit and put in you, his word and put in you, and take somebody who's prone to steal and make them into a giver. What is that? That's God's best. God doesn't want you to just be a consumer. He doesn't want you to be just focused on your needs and, and just living from paycheck to paycheck and barely getting by and envying and feeling sorry for yourself because everybody has more than you do. That's not God's plan for you. He wants you to get into the place of a giver. He wants you to make and, and receive and then He wants you to give. Can you see how that puts you in a different place? If you had the mentality of a thief, can you imagine the lifestyle of a thief? Let's just say God said, okay, look, I love you. You can steal. That's fine. Go ahead and steal. Uh, I feel sorry for you. Everybody feels sorry for you. Just steal. Do you realize what that would do to a person? They would understand that they're a thief. They would only be thinking about themselves and what they could get from someone else. And they didn't earn what they had. And they didn't work for what they had. And they wouldn't have what they had if they didn't break the rules and break the law. And it just feeds on itself until they have this image of themselves that is so poor, that is so beaten down, and it's so far below God's best. So Paul says, look, I'm going to turn this around. You, you, you who are stealing, go get a job. Go, that'll change your life if you just start to earn your living and then go to the next level and take what you have, what you earn by your own sweat, and give it away. I want to turn you into a giver. Listen, God's a giver. God has wealth running out of His throne. He has a river of life that flows out of Him. He has wealth untold, and He gives and gives and gives and gives. 
And he knows that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And he doesn't want us to just live our lives down here where all we do is try to get what we can get. And all we try to, even if you work for it, you just keep what you get. Somebody says you ought to, you know, you, you, there are people that all they're involved in is just getting all they can and canning all they get and sitting on the can. Well, that's just focused on you and what you can do. And it's, it's, it's a way of life but it's not the best. God wants you to go beyond that to the point where you give, where in, in, in your heart, you're a giver. Can you see how that changes your thinking, how that changes your image of yourself? I, I didn't get what I got by, by dishonest means. I worked for it, I earned it. And then I took it and I was able to bless. I was able to help someone else. I was able to lift someone. It puts you in a different place. Why would we want to forfeit God's best for some experience like stealing or whatever that would gain you? I'm convinced that stealing, robbing, it, it has a greater impact on the criminal than it does on the victim. I mean, a victim can get over it. You're going to go get your stuff back or rebuy or replace. But a criminal, a thief, it, it, it begins to mushroom and they begin to see themselves. What a sad way to live your life. We don't have to be caught up in that, in, in, in that rat race. Let's move out of it and let's enjoy God's best. As Christians, we weren't just set free so we could sit around and see what else God could give us and what else God could do for us. He wants to lift us up and make us givers. He wants us to be producers. He wants us to be providers. He wants us to experience what He experiences when He saves, when He gives, when He supplies. He wants us to have that experience in our lives. Isn't that great? He didn't just say, look, I'm going to save you and you sit on the bench and watch me work. No, he said, get in the game. I want to work with you. I want you to experience victory. I want you to experience the joy of giving. I want you to experience the joy of creating and being a blessing. We were blessed to be a blessing. It's great to be blessed. I love to be blessed. But there is something about being a blessing that transcends that. And that's what God wants for us. Why hang around, you know, down here where life is boring and dull and sad and, and there's no hope and no help? Why, why, not, why not go up to God's level and be a victor, a giver, a blesser, a provider ourselves? That's what God wants for us. And he's not doing it to try to be mean or, or, or put us in some sort of religious bondage. He's saying, look, there's a better way to live. Stealing is not it. Just consuming everything on yourself is not it. You need to go to the next level and give. Can you see that from, I got all that out of that one verse. We have not, we've not become Christians so we could just do nothing and just to enjoy the grace of God. The grace of God that's in us ought to come out of us in the form of good works. Let me put it this way, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Paul said, but the grace of God, or by the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. This is another take on Ephesians 2.10 for where we're His workmanship's, workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Here Paul's saying, look, I received grace, but it wasn't for nothing. Grace didn't just come into me and stop. I work more abundantly than anybody I know. I'm always working. Now, the, the question is, why are you working? If you're working to try to get God's favor, that's wrong. That's religious. That's religion. If you're working to try to be forgiven or pay God for your forgiveness or tell God how, show God how sorry you are for your sins, that's wrong. But if you're working because you've been changed, if you're working because God's grace is in you and coming out of you, that's Christianity. That's not religion. That's the way we ought to live. There ought to be fruit in our life. There ought to be good works. There ought to be something outside that proves what's happened and, and that testifies to what happened on the inside. I'm going to read this again because this just blesses me. By the grace of God, I am what I am. His grace toward me was not in vain. Evidently, Paul's saying, if God had given me all this and I just did nothing, it would be in vain. It wouldn't really have any impact on the world. 
but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Man, that is so powerful. Isn't that encouraging? I, that encourages me. We ought to, we ought to have and, and, and be involved in doing things for God, not because we have to, not because we do it or else, but because we want to. I've said it like this, you know, we're givers. We have the giver in us. For God so loved, he gave. We have the love of God, we give. For us not to give would be like when the offering plate comes by, would be like a person not breathing, just holding your breath. You can't do that. You've got to breathe. You've got to breathe in. You've got to breathe out. You've got to breathe in. You've got to breathe out. And, the, and giving is the same way for a Christian. We're givers by nature. We, we ought to be working by nature. You work, you rest. You work, you rest. You give, you receive. You give, you receive. We're not takers. We're not just consumers. But to really experience God's best in your life, do something for someone else. Give and, and give out of yourself. Find a way to, to bless somebody or do something beyond where you live and, and, and where you are. Isn't that great? Paul said, I, I labor more abundantly than they all. He must have been the hardest worker. Say, Paul, why are you working so hard? Well, the time is short. Oh, did, did God tell you that, that you had to? No, I, I want to live for God. I want to work for God. I want to use my life up for the things of God. Isn't that something? You know, before we were saved, we couldn't even get in the game. We weren't included. We weren't part of it. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> I, I, when I was in uh, junior high, I don't think I made it into high school, but when I was in junior high, I went out for the basketball team. I loved basketball. And, you know, when nobody was on the court, I could make shots and whatnot. And, but I was so skinny, and I was so, I, I was just, I was, I didn't know I was skinny. I guess I never looked in the mirror. But anyway, I wasn't a basketball player by nature. I just loved it, and I wanted to play, and I went out for the team, and I worked really hard in practice, and the coach, there was two or three of us like me, I would say late bloomers, but I'm not sure what that means. But we, we weren't as physically athletic as a lot of the people on the team and so we barely made the team and spent most of the year on the bench and yet we had our uniforms but we sat on the bench and man we wanted nothing more than to get in that game if I could just get in there just let coach let me in let me in and so uh, a few times you know they'd let us in and man were we excited we get out and run and we'd and and one time they let me in the game and I don't know if we were way ahead or way behind but you know one or the other and I got in the game and I don't know I was on that night and I scored I was only in there for a minute or two and I scored 10 points I mean double digits was I ever happy that was the best basketball night of my life I found out later, you know, I'm not cut out for this, and I went on to other things. I actually started preaching, <laughs> and I hope I can preach better than I can play basketball. But anyhow, uh, I, I wasn't even in the game most of the time, and that is the most frustrating thing in the world, to not be in the game. You want to be in the game, you see the game, and you're not part of it. And that's the way we were. Before Jesus came, we couldn't even get in the game. Our righteousness was as filthy rags. Whatever we did didn't matter up. There was no use of us really trying because it didn't count. Nothing we did counted. But once Jesus came and was raised from the dead, now we're called and we're chosen and we're accepted and we're adopted. You're in the game. Why sit on the bench? Man, if I could have been a starter, I would have started every game. I wouldn't sit on the bench. Now people are in Christianity. They're sitting on the bench voluntarily. Get off the bench and get in the game. There are points to be scored. There are victories to be won. There are lives to be changed. God needs you. And I don't care what vocation you have. You may think you're in a dead-end job, but I'm telling you, you're in the game. You may think that your life doesn't amount to much, but I'm telling you, you're in the game. You're a Christian. God loves you. He knows you. He's giving you opportunities to touch your world. 
You can take anything, and we're going to get into this later, because I want you to experience God's best. And you don't have to quit your job to do it. You don't have to move overseas to do it. You can do it right where you are. You can take any vocation, any life, and turn it into a supernatural experience, because it's not what you do that's so important. It's how you do it. It's how you interact. It's what you say. It's what your motives are. It's how you get God involved in the situations that you encounter. That's so important, and everybody can do this. Listen, you're in the game. Play with, your, with all your heart. Do all you can to score and make a difference. Realize that every day you get up, you're going on the court. You're not on the bench. You haven't been overlooked. You haven't been put on the sideline, but, but this is your, your life. It's your time. It's your game, and it's started already. Get involved and do something for God. Quit, you know, when I got out on the course, the court, after all those days of practice and all those hours of waiting and all those games where I didn't get in, and the coach said, Fritz, go in. Oh, my, I'm going in. I didn't say, now, coach, do I have to run every single time? Do I have to run all the way down the floor? Can I just, like, can I just sit in this corner and, and they can just throw me the ball when they, no, man, I want to be right in the middle of everything. I ran up and down. Why not? I'm fresh. <laughs> I, I haven't been playing the whole game. I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm more refreshed fresher than anybody on the court. I ran up and down. I played defense. I played offense. I played everything in between. I'm ready to shoot the ball, pass the ball. I'm not looking for ways to excuse myself. And that's what happens many times in, in Christianity. You, you get saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. You get some knowledge. You get some education. God says, you're in. And we're like, how much can I do wrong and still be in the, is there, can I, could I, could I wear this 10 pound weight around my neck and still, can, can I, can I do that and still be in the game? And it's the wrong question. We ought to be asking, how many points can I score? How many minutes can I play? How hard can I play? How much can I accomplish in the short time that I have to make a difference? I've been waiting my whole life to be part of something. I've been waiting my whole life to be in something. And now I'm in. I want to make the most of every minute. Can you see the difference? Oh, my, we sell ourselves so short. You believe lies that you're not valuable, that your life doesn't count, that you're in a dead-end job. There's no such thing as a dead-end job if you're in the job that God called you to be in. He can promote you. He can use you there. He can move you. He can, he can do any number of things if you'll just begin to live life God's way. Put His principles into practice. Begin to, begin to take the Scriptures as God's Word to you and do it out of principle. I'm not, I'm, I, you know, there are people that are involved in all kinds of questionable behavior because they can get away with it. B pull out of all that. I don't want to get, I don't want to get involved in that. I'm not trying to see how close I can get to the line and still stay in the game. I want to, I want to play by the rules. I want to play in, in, in regulation time. I want to do things right. And I want to make a difference that counts legally. I don't want somebody to pad the scorebook in my favor. If I didn't score, I don't want them to lie about it. I don't want somebody to, to, to open the lane and just let me score because they feel sorry for me. Listen, we're, we're in the game of life. You're in the kingdom of God, and what you do counts. It's so important that you make the most of it. Look at 2 Corinthians 2.14. And, uh, well... It says this, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. One, one translation says, thanks be to God. He always gives us a place as sharers in the victory procession of Christ. We share in the victory with him. We're able to experience victory. He didn't, he didn't come and say, look, you sit on the bench. I'm going to win the victory. And then, and then we'll get the trophy together. No, he said, I've won. Now I want you to get in the game. I want you to have a little taste of what victory's like. You're going to face some challenges. You're going to have some opposition. You're going to have some things come up. But I'm giving you the victory. I won. And I want you now to enjoy that experience because there's nothing like victory. There is nothing like overcoming. You, you can't get that experience on the bench. You can't get that as a taker, a consumer, a 
thief. You have to get in the game and play by the rules, and then you can see God go to work in your behalf. Life ought to be an adventure. You ought to be experiencing these things in your life, and you begin by simply putting God's Word to work. Read the epistles, and whenever He says do something, do it. When He says don't do something, don't do it. And say, Lord, use me right where I am. Make me valuable. Help me to score. Let me, let me do things that make a difference. And show me how to do it, and He will. Every life counts. No one's wasted. You are in the game, and you mean something. Man, next time we're going to talk about being champions and a champion mentality. You need that. I'm pretty sure you're not getting that on the news. You may not be getting it in social media, but you're going to get it here on this program. We've run out of time today, but I've got a lot more for you, so make plans to be with us on our next program. And until then, may God's best be yours. This teaching will show you how to live life God's way and receive His very best for you. Receive your free copy of this series by visiting our website, gregfritz.org, and use code FREE at checkout. If you haven't looked at our Facebook page, let me encourage you to go do that. Be a follower. Like us. We put a lot of information on there that will bless you and help you and encourage you. We put video clips on there and, and quotes, and then you'll find out what we're doing, some of the meetings that we have. It's just a great way for us to connect outside of this program, and we put a lot in it for your benefit. So go take a look, check it out, and like us on Facebook. Receive your free copy of this series by visiting our website, gregfritz.org, and use code FREE at checkout. Greg, I love his sense of humor. I love how he bring out the word. I just, just love Greg. Awesome man. Awesome man of God. Immediately he became a favorite teacher of mine because he delivers the word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. He's just straight to the point and down to it. And just to let go, be happy. I've been in ministry years. I've never heard anybody teach like this. And I had breakthrough today that's going to impact other people. I am so grateful for Greg Fritz. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. The faithful financial support of our partners enables us to produce the good news program. We invite you to donate and partner with us today. Learn more at gregfritz.org. If you don't realize what's happening around you, you need to wake up. You only have one chance at this. You were a foreigner. You were an alien. You were an outsider. But now you've been called. You've been chosen. You've been brought into the kingdom, brought into the family. You're in the game. And you're in the game not so you can lose, not so that life can beat up on you, not so that you can experience the worst that life has to offer. God wants to live through you. He says, whoever's born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has victories planned for you. He has conquests planned for you, exploits planned for you. We, if we could see it that way, we get our eyes off the negative and get our eyes off of the temptations of the world and they wouldn't appeal to us. You wouldn't even care about those things. They're, they're just a distraction from the main event. And you're in the main event. You are the main person in your world. You need to stand up and believe that you're a champion. You're an overcomer.